Lovely brag off to you. Thank you very much. Q U. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Fantastic view. Not bad. No, that will do. That's great. Congratulations on all the awards. Thank you very much. The BAFTA. Yep. Many others besides. Yes, yes. This little thing here on the lapel. That's, uh, I've been made a Fellow of the Royal Society. They do, once a year they elect a fellow who is not a scientist, but as this society was formed in 1660 and it's still going even stronger, it's wonderful. Pretty hot, so we better get on with it. Here we go. You can count us down, please, Melvin. Four, three, two, one, on. This is horribly lowbrow for you. I'm sorry. I'm going to have to ask you some quick fire questions. A favourite philosopher. My mind wipes out when you ask me favourite anything, but I'd say Bertrand Russell. Not a great philosopher at all, but he wrote the history of Western philosophy, encapsulations all the, all the way through. I read it when I was about 17, and it introduced me to the whole subject, so I owe him a debt. A favourite author. That's impossible. Of course it's Shakespeare, but uh, Dickens. A favourite painter. Rembrandt. A <laughs> favourite composer. Beethoven. <laughs> <laughs> try I'm strangulating. <laughs> you'll try to let you off the hook now. But here's a tricky question as well, I'm afraid. Of all the people that you have worked with and watched work and interviewed on the South Bank show in particular, has any stood out? Well, about 800 of them have stood <laughs> out. That's the only thing you can say. They're different as chalk and cheese. What they have in common is that they're quite exceptional at what they do and they've just somehow or other got that extra confidence and the extra two or three percent of of talent and it makes all the difference. But watching them work and talking about their work, which is what I do, has just been a privilege and it would be ridiculous to offend 799 people. The South Bank show ran for so many years, started in 78, went to air in 78. How sorry were you to say goodbye to it? I was very sorry to say goodbye to it. And, uh, but there we are, we had a wonderful run. You can't complain. And ITV moved on and that's the way it went. Do you think there's still an appetite for serious arts broadcasting? I think there's an enormous appetite for serious arts broadcasting and for light-hearted arts broadcasting as well. I think it's out there. We're a really, we're a country which is per capita the most artistic country in the world. Uh, it's a big industry in this country. Two million people are employed in the arts and media and, the, and that should be reflected on television and when it is it gets very good big minority audiences and yep there'll be appetite and it'll, I can't think it'll do anything but grow if the programs are good enough. Do you even begin to predict where TV itself will be in 20 years' time? No, but for this programme, like I've broken the rule of a lifetime and talked about my favourites, <laughs> uh, yes, I think it'll be in the hands of the winners will be the people who are doing classy minority programming or mega entertainment programmes. It'll polarise that way. You've worked extensively in radio and television. If I had a gun to your head, which would you say has been the most fun to work in? Well, if you'd gone to my head, I'd go across the road to, tele to radio because it's closer. But uh, they're, both, they're both such fun. Radio is faster. You had a working class upbringing in Cumbria. What was that like? Well, it was a very happy. My dad worked in a factory. My mother made buttonholes in another factory. Then we had a pub. It was working class. We were, a lot went on. I sang in choirs. I went to clubs. Um, uh, I'd been congregational church and church clubs and that sort of thing. I was busy all the time. It was a good school, did a lot of reading, did a lot of acting, played a lot of sports. You did a lot of reading. Yes. You I talked did. about authors being your heroes. Yes, they were. I read and read. I was an only child and I started to read when I was four or something and just, I took to it. I became my addiction. So how big a part has luck played in your life? Oh, it's played a big part. The, to single out two things, I stayed on at school because of a history teacher. I was, wasn't doing well at school, particularly well at that time, but he met my father on the street and said, you should stay on. And then I got into the B I got into Oxford because I worked hard, but I got into the BBC through luck. I, I went for this scholarship again, traineeship, and I got it. And I wouldn't have gone for it if somebody hadn't just said, oh, "En passant, why don't you have a crack at it?" I'm going to leave a bit of time here to talk about something very serious. You've talked in the past about your mental breakdowns. One, I think, in your teens, and one in your thirties. Can you put into words what they were like to get through? Well, I put it into words at length in one or two places, but. The one in my teens, from about 13 to 14 and a half, was the most frightening thing that I've ever, or hope ever to experience, or fear ever to experience. It seemed that part of my mind had just left my head, and that this bit was dead. And I didn't know how to join them up again. And this happened all the time. It happened in the classroom, it happened in the street, it happened when I was trying to get sleep. And I couldn't talk to any single person about it. Could, there was no way in my social life, in my friends, my mother and father, I could talk to anybody. And I don't know how I got through that. And the second was that when I was 29, 30, 31, 
a different sort of massive depression came back, sort of wanting to, you know, jump on railway lines and all that sort of stuff. And you had to f hold yourself back. But by that time, I found that I could talk to people about it, and that helped. And I got through that. And that's why I'm president of mind, uh, because you can get through it. And uh, it's important to tell people, because a lot of people have these sort of uh, unhappy depressions. To tell you can get through it. Do you feel you're free from it now? No. It's always there. I always fear it. There's always a shadow. It'll never go away. Finally, light note, you're a big Arsenal fan. Anne Carlisle? Anne Carlisle United. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Okay. Really nice to meet you. Thanks very much. Thank Good. you very much Thank for you doing very it. Much. Oh, it's a pleasure. And we got it in five minutes. We got it in five I minutes. I don't believe it.